What's up, everybody? Back with another st study here in this uh, Words of Jesus series. And today we're going to be finishing up, finishing up the book of Matthew. We're going to read through uh, the words of Jesus in chapters 26 through 28. Should be a pretty short study. And we're going to see the crucifixion, the resurrection, or at least his words, his surrounding words. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. And before that, if you haven't seen my uh, last daily psalm video, Psalm 149, check it out. Uh, check it out at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Larry Newport. But uh, everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire. For the second death, a body and soul. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with Him in His kingdom. And we we all sin. We all we all fall short of the glory of God. We can't earn a spot in His kingdom, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came two thousand years ago. He is God, not the Father, but the Son. It's two individuals. He came two thousand years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us. But lived a perfect life and although he was perfect he didn't deserve any punishment he didn't deserve to die the death that he died was for us the death that we deserve in the lake of fire for our sins he died for us on the cross so that through him that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life through him and his sacrifice that he made um, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection that he lived out, his righteousness. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or a change of mind. Most of the time we see repent in the Bible, it means to turn away from your sins and turn to God. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later because he is alive. If you believe he died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later. And it's coming back to give you eternal life through his sacrifice that he made. And you call on to him, and you call out to him to forgive you. Forgive you for all your sins. And you mean it. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit changes your heart and leads you to follow him. The Holy Spirit gives you wisdom and discernment. The Holy Spirit gives you power. If you believe, if you truly believe, and you ask him to forgive you, ask him to save you. He'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit and He will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love Him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. Now let's get into this study. We're getting uh, starting off in Matthew 26. Jesus said, As you know, the Passover is two days away, two days away and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. So he knew the time had come. He knew what he was going to suffer. He knew he was going to have to go through with it. And he could have he could have not done it. He could have not done it, but he did it for us. To save us. To give us eternal life. To, in order that through his sacrifice we can be justified before God. He covers our sins. He paid the penalty for our sins. So we don't have to pay that penalty, which is a eternal death in a lake of fire. He said, as you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. And then we know Mary Magdalene. Uh, poured perfume on him uh, she broke a jar of perfume a glass of perfume and, and poured it on him expensive perfume and and they were complaining about it more specifically I believe it was uh, well here in Matthew it doesn't say Judas necessarily um, but it says when 
the disciples saw it, they were angry. They said because it could have been sold and and uh, money given to the poor. And Jesus said, "Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial." I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. And this is what we're doing right now. It's written in the gospels uh, and preached all around the world that she did this for him. Jesus said, go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, my appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. And while they were, uh, while they were eating, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. So one of, he had 12 disciples. He had other followers as well, but 12 apostles. And one betrayed him. And, you know. I've, I've been betrayed by a lot of people. You know, a lot of us have been betrayed by a lot of people. And, uh. This is one of his closest people. One of his main men. And so they started saying, well, it's not going to, not, not me, right? Like, I, I'm not going to betray you. And Jesus said, the one who has dipped his hand in the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man will go just it is, as it is written about him. Because it was prophesied that he would be betrayed by one of his closest friends. And there are so many prophecies being fulfilled here in these last couple chapters. Says the one who dipped his hand in the bowl with me will betray me, which is all of them. The Son of Man will go just as it, as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would have been better for him if he had not been born. That's that's serious. And then Judas asked, Judas asked, no, surely not me. Jesus said, yes, it is you. Although, and we, what we know after that, he uh, says Satan entered him and, and he left to go betray him. And as they were eating the Passover meal, Jesus said, take and eat. This is my body, the bread the unleavened bread and the bread represents his body that was crucified for us the wine represents his blood that was shed for us and when we do communion that's uh you know that's what it represents his sacrifice that he made for us we do that in remembrance of him And this is what the this is why the unleavened bread and the his leaven represents sin. He's the unleavened bread that was broken for us. And uh the wine, you know, uh as mentioned in the scripture is the blood of grapes. And wine has, the grapes have to be crushed in order to bring forth the wine. Then he gave them the drink, gave them the cup, and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is, my, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. For many, for everyone. He died for the whole world. And sadly, most people just reject him and ignore him. And a lot of people even mock him and blaspheme him, just like, 
uh, people did back then. And just like people do his servants as well. Jesus said they hated me, they will hate you also. He said you will be persecuted by all men for my name's sake. By all nations. This is the blood of the covenant. See, the first covenant was... Uh, well, the sign of the covenant was circumcision. But the sign of the new covenant, which is the circumcision of the heart, meaning uh, we have a changed heart through the Holy Spirit. And um, in the old covenant, um, it was the blood of animals that was shed. The high priest would, uh, on the Day of Atonement, there were uh, there were daily sacrifices, but on the Day of Atonement, they would sacrifice an animal to to atone for all the sins of the people. Um, and this would happen every year, but in the New Covenant, his his blood his uh, blood was shed one time for the forgiveness of sins and for all time. Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now, from now on, until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. At the wedding supper. Hallelujah. Jesus said this very night. You will fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. So it was prophesied that when the shepherd is struck, the sheep will be scattered. And it's a prophecy about him, about when he is taken to be crucified, he was abandoned by all his disciples. This very night you will fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the, strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, hallelujah, but after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. See, they didn't understand. They didn't believe that he was, and realize that he was going to rise from the dead, even though he told them. But after I have risen, and a lot of them didn't even realize he was really going to be crucified like that. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. And Peter said, Peter denied it, said, I, I won't betray you. Jesus, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. This very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And that was fulfilled that very night. So they went to uh, Gethsemane. The, the garden, the garden of Gethsemane, which is still there in Jerusalem today. Jesus said, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. And he went to go pray to the Father. He was filled with sorrow because he knew what he was about to suffer. He knew what he was about to go through. He knew that his time there on earth was over. And uh, and as we're going to read here in a second, he, he didn't want to go through it. He didn't, he didn't want to suffer. No one wants to suffer. But he did for us. He made that sacrifice for us. He knew the scriptures. He knew what he was about to suffer, what he was about to go through. And he could have not done it. But it's the love of God. It's the love that he had for us. And he didn't deserve it. It's we, it's us that deserve it. It's us that deserve it for our sins. He died for our sins. He didn't have sin. 
He didn't sin. He didn't do anything wrong his whole life. But he took on the punishment for us. He died for us. He said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. And then he prayed. He said, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. The cup of suffering, what he was about to go through. He didn't want to be crucified. He didn't want to... He knew he was going to be beaten and everything. He knew, he knew the scriptures. He said, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. And to fulfill all righteousness, to, to give us eternal life according to God's law. Because... There's no other way for us to truly be right with God, to, for our, our sins to be removed. Except for someone to be perfect and take on the punishment for us. To It's uh, imputed righteousness. Through faith. It's not through, uh, not through anything that, that we do. Yeah, we have to be obedient to God. It's very important. But it's not through our own obedience to God. It's not through our own actions, our own works, that we can be saved. We're all sinners. We all fall short, and it's through Him that we receive His righteousness, His perfection, that He lived out, and He took on our punishment that we deserve, that He didn't deserve, but we do. He did it for us, and He knew He knew what He was about to suffer, and He prayed and He said, "My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me." Yet not as I will, but as you will. And he continued praying. And then he dis, uh, then he dis, he returned and found his disciples sleeping. They were supposed to keep watch with him, just like us. Now we're supposed to keep watch for his return. We're supposed to. We're supposed to be awake. But the Bible also says that we fall asleep. That his people fall asleep here in these last days. And we read this in Matthew 25. If you haven't seen the Matthew 25 study, go back and check that out. But see in Matthew 25 it said, While the bridegroom was delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep. And we need to be ready. We need to be on the, the alert. We need to be watching for him and, and and guarding his kingdom, guarding each other, defending him. We need to be ready and we need to be paying attention. We, the time is near. The time is very near. So then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. He said, could you men, uh, could you men, not keep watch with me for one hour? He said, watch and pray this so that you will not fall into temptation. Watch. What's, what we need? We need to do. Watch. Wait for. Watch for his return. Wait for his return. Be ready. And pray so that we don't fall into temptation and sin. Or go back into sin at all. Even though we all, none of us are perfect. We all sin. But we need to be awake. We need to avoid sin at all costs. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. The difference between the flesh and the spirit spirit that Paul speaks about see we want to, we want to do good but uh, it's we're walking in the spirit is allowing the Holy Spirit to to work in us and to uh, transform us and to to lead us to, to to obey him to follow him 
and uh, walking in the flesh is allowing uh, temptation to get to us and allowing uh, sin in our life. So watch and pray so that you so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. And he went away to pray again. He said, My father, if it is not possible for, for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. And we need to wish the same thing that may his may his will be done. We need to pray for mercy. We pray for mercy, but it, not our will, his will. And then he returned again and said, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. And we knew, we know it was Judas that, that betrayed him. And he, uh, he said as a sign, he said, whoever I kiss, that's the one. And uh, came and kissed him on the cheek. And Jesus said, friend, do what you came for. And when they uh, went to go arrest Jesus, Peter took out his sword and and cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest. Jesus said, put your sword back in its place. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. And um, we also see this um, in the end time prophecies. Uh, a lot of this we just read is applies to us as well here in these last days. We need to be ready. We need to be on the alert. We need to watch and pray. And overcome. But we also see. Uh, uh, it says. He who kills with the sword. Will be killed with the sword. Um, and I can't remember the exact scripture. Let's see. So this is the this this is the patience of the saints. Um, yeah, I can't remember the exact scripture right now for some reason. I'll just I'm just gonna continue in the study. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call on my Father, and He will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled? They say it must happen this way. And it's interesting that he mentions 12 legions of angels. Because uh, if we go back to David, David had an army of 288,000. That's, uh, that's double 144,000. And we know that the 144,000 are divided up into, into 12 sections, 12 groups. And then he mentions here 12 legions of angels. You know, it just makes me wonder if his uh, his army, which, uh, again, if you haven't seen the, my last uh, Psalm, Psalm 149 video, check it out. It makes me wonder if his army is, uh, is 144,000 angels and 144,000, the 144,000 of his people. I don't know. He said, "Do you, do you think I, uh, do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at least, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the would the scriptures be fulfilled? Let's say it must happen this way. 
He said, I could, I could, I could call on the Father, he, and He would deliver me right now. I don't have to suffer this, but how then will the Scriptures be fulfilled? He's He willingly laid down His life for us. And there were so many script, so many prophecies being fulfilled here, and He's here at this time. And so Jesus said to the crowd, He said, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts, or every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. There was the appointed time for it to be fulfilled. And so, when he was being questioned, they brought him before the high priest. And, they, and he asked him, he said, Tell us, are you the Christ, the Son of God? Jesus said, Yes, it is as you say. But I say to all of you, in the future you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The Bible says when He, when he comes on the clouds, said every eye will see Him. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, even those who put him to death. They're going to see him from Sheol. Their souls, which are in Sheol, are going to see him when he comes on the clouds. He said, yes, it is as you say, but I tell you, I tell all of you, in the future you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One, right hand of the Father, and coming on the clouds of heaven. Hallelujah. And that just angered him and made him, made them ready to put put him to death even more. He, he just said he said clearly, I, I am the Christ, I'm the Son of God. And that just it had to be fulfilled. And then um as all this was going on, Peter denied him. He was recognized. He was recognized as one of his disciples, and, and he denied it. He said, I don't know him. He denied him three times. And, and then he said, and then a rooster crowed. And I uh, said, then Peter remembered what Jesus said. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Chapter 27. And so this is when Jesus was before Pilate. And um, he asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, Yes, it, it is as you say. And then they, and then they crucified him. And as he was hanging on the cross, he said, "Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani," which means, "My God, My God, why have you, why have you forsaken me?" And of course, at that time, it seemed that God had forsaken him and he hadn't delivered him, at least not yet, because he had to suffer that. But at the same time, he this was this is a mentioned in Psalm 22, and everything else that was happening and happening at that, that at that time when he was being crucified is written about in. Psalm 22. And, uh, you know, God's leading me to go ahead and 
go over to Psalm 22 real quick. I'll read a little bit out, out of Psalm 22. Psalm 22 begins with this. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from me? Uh, so far from saving me. So far from the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, and I'm not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. And our fathers, or in you, our fathers put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by people, and despised, scorned by men and despised by the people. This is prophecy about him, about Jesus, when, when this was all happening. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. This is exactly what this is prophecy about what was happening in him right at that time. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, deliver him, since he delights in him. And that's exactly what what they said to him. They said, "He said he's the Son of God. Let him come down from the cross. We'll believe him." Let God rescue him if if he is his son, if he's the Messiah. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust even at my mother's breast. From my birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been you have been my God. Do not be far from me. Her trouble is near. And there is no one to help. Many strong or many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. As he, he was surrounded, he was being mocked and roaring lions tearing their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It is melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt. And my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. And this was written in about 1000 BC. A couple hundred years before crucifixion even existed. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. I can count all my bones, meaning none was broken. And that's uh, also the Passover lamb every year. It's supposed to be unblemished without a bone broken. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. And this is exactly what happened too. They cast lots for his his uh, clothes and divided his clothes up. And uh, and I'm gonna stop it right there and go back to uh, go back here to Matthew. Matthew 28. Even though he suffered like that for us, he didn't deserve it, we deserve it. He suffered like that for us. But he was resurrected. He was resurrected back to life and through him, through his sacrifice that he made, even if we if we believe in him and accept his free gift of salvation, if we follow him, even if we die, 
we will be resurrected back to life like he was and given eternal life in a new glorified immortal body and now we're getting into uh, chapter 28 And um, so the first ones he appeared to was uh, well, we know it was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, which is I probably his mother, but I'm not I'm not sure. I believe it was probably his mother. So after, after the angels appeared to him, appeared to him, and they they went to the tomb, and his body was gone, and uh, an angel appeared to him and said he's risen, just as he said, and uh, then Jesus appeared to them afterwards and said greetings, shalom. And said, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Just as he said before he was crucified. I'll go back here to... To chapter 26, verse 13. He said, but after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. And Matthew, uh, the book of Matthew, Matthew 28, ends with this. After he met his disciples, it ends with this. To all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. His father. Basically, father, the father is the head of the household, but he gave the son. They're both God, but he gave the son all authority. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Hallelujah. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you throughout his teaching, throughout his uh his uh, time there on earth when he taught them. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always. He's with us through his Spirit. Well, his Spirit is in us, but he, he is with us as well. And through his spirit. And surely I am with you always. To the very end of the age. Where we're living right now. We're living at the end of the age. Surely I am with you always. To the very end of the age. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's the end of the book of Matthew. Next we're going to be getting into Mark. We have Mark, Luke, John, and Revelation as well. There's uh, some words of Jesus in Revelation that we're, we're going to need to go through. And Lord willing. And we're still going through the Book of Enoch series. Uh, the last study in Enoch, we saw about the Son of Man. We saw about the Father, the Head of Days, and also the Rapture and Resurrection. So uh, you can go back and check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. But... uh. It's only by His grace, by His mercy, by His sacrifice that He made for us that we can be saved. We don't. We deserve that that punishment. We deserve that death that He died for us. But through Him, that sec the second death is removed through His sacrifice that He made for us. 
the second death is removed. Even if this body dies, our soul doesn't. Through him. But to anyone who doesn't accept, accept his free gift of salvation, anyone who denies him, who rejects him, who uh, stays a sinner, will lose their soul. Will be thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul. But God offers us life if we'll only decide to, if we'll only turn to Him, if we'll only decide to follow Him and and seek His forgiveness. Give your life to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, let's, let's stay strong in faith. Let's pre preach this message. Let's let people know about the goodness of God. Let's let people know about salvation in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. It's only by His blood, His blood that was shed for us, by His body that was broken for us, that we can receive eternal life. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to Him. And repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. There's not much time left. And God is offering you eternal life. Don't pass it up. That's the end of the book of Matthew. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.